we treat the person at Publix or Kroger, our life is committed to worship. That's how you notice a godly man, by the way he lives and acts and that his life is committed to God. Doesn't mean he walks around with this wonderful holy glow all the time. But the bottom line is this, is that when you hear him talk, he's filled with wisdom. Why? Because he knows God. He's committed. His heart is faithful to him. His heart is committed to him 100%. And at the same time, his life is committed to, to be an act of worship. There's nothing greater than to hear a young man say that he learned how to love God by his father. doesn't mean his father's perfect. This isn't asking for perfection. It's asking for direction. We're not perfect yet, but we're moving towards Christ, and our life on a daily basis becomes more and more like him. In fact, I wrote a, 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 uh, an email to the man that discipled me, Bill McNair, and just thanked him this week for being a godly spiritual father. Why? Because I saw Christ in him. He lived it. He breathed it. Let me show you another thing. He has a heart of worship. Let me, this word for serve again is it, it's a, in the context here, it means not a toilsome labor, but a joyful experience of liberation. Isn't that interesting? If he's, his heart's committed to the relationship, a godly father has a heart of integrity. Look at, look at the next line. It says, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. Now some translations use the word integrity, and I put that in there because sincere means that. Sincerity is the word tamen. It means wholehearted, complete, blameless. The Greek also, now if you take it because, and you compare it to the Greek word, it's got the same meaning, but it's interesting because I like the way the Greek says it in this way. Because the Greek means without wax. You're going without wax? means this, we don't have one in here. But imagine this is a clay pot, okay? And what it means, sincerity or sincere, means many times in the, in the, in, during biblical times, if the pot had a crack in it, if the sale person wanted to sell it, he would take some wax and he would put it over it and it would, it would mask the crack. The crack was still there, but you couldn't see it. And he would sell it. And then when they would put something in it, the pot would break. So the word sincere means without wax. It means without a facade, without a fake. Isn't that interesting? So we're supposed to serve, now watch. Therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. It means without wax, serve blamelessly. Whole, complete, a wholehearted, engaged, and listen to this. It means a whole heart engaged blamelessly in, now this is, this is really cool, in the decision. See, when we come to serve God, when we come and our heart's committed to a relationship with him, we're committed to that decision. Don't you love a man that no matter what, if he makes a decision, he's committed to it? And he doesn't wishy-washy with it? He's committed. Bam, we're doing this. That's the kind of guy you want as a leader, right? That's the way fathers are supposed to be. Are you committed to the decision of your family? Are you committed to the decision of your marriage? Wholeheartedly? Totally into it? No matter what the marriage, I mean, if there's tough times, you're still committed. That's a godly father. It says, if he's leading with integrity, if he has a heart of integrity, he says truth also. Look what it says. Fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. The word truth means firmness, faithfulness. It means to conduct oneself with God's holy standards. All of these. Now, this truth, this sincerity, this wholeheartedly fearing God, why are we doing this? Because this, don't lose me, guys. Don't lose me on this, okay? It means this. All of these are expressions of our love and devotion to our God who loves us and who's devoted to us. Do we think this is, you know, we, today in the church you don't want to say, well, you got to fear God, act like you love him, walk in, his, in the ways he wants you to do. Because why? It's called legalism, right? No, it's not. Legalism is law with no love. Legalism is law with no relationship. This is God saying, I love you. How many of you want your kids to act like they love you? Okay. How many of you want your kids to act according to the way you train them and raise them to act? 
okay? And how many of you want them to do that because they love you? Why would God not want the same? But when we preach these things or teach these things, what happens? Oh, we're just getting a little legalistic. It's all about grace. It is about grace. His power and grace is what gets us to live like this. That's it. Now, here's the next one. Bada bing, bada boom. I think. Is it stuck again? There we go. A godly father is committed to the challenge. What challenge? Look at the rest of it. Verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him with sincerity and truth and put away the gods which your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Let me show you something. A godly father is committed to a challenge. What's the challenge? Here's the deal. Every one of us got, got past, don't we? Anybody not have a past? You just started today? Okay, good. Everyone's got a past. Everyone's got stuff. We've all had, now, now, now when I say this, I am not being insensitive. Please understand. We've all had tough family lives in some way, shape, or form. But there is a point where we got to let it go. Okay? There's a point in our life where we got to let things go that are not moving us to follow Christ. Whatever that might be. Whatever, that, whatever it is, whatever it is, because if we are still holding on to the past and all the memories and all the crud that we went through and all the way maybe our dad treated us and all the way maybe our mom treated us, all the way our husband treated us or our wife treated us, whatever that, we got to let it go sometime because if we don't, hear me on this, we're worshiping it. It's still a golden calf. It's still something that's been set up in some way, shape, or form and it's got a little bit higher than God. Why? Because it's what's motivating our walk. It's what's motivating our life. God is supposed to be the one that is the one that's motivating and sharing and leading us, and we're supposed to be following him. But unfortunately, many times our memories and stuff like that get up higher, and we're still holding on to stuff because we went through this, we went through that. And let me tell you, I'm not being insensitive. Get healing. Pray, seek healing, but move towards letting it go because if you don't, it becomes a God in your life. And men, let me tell you something. If you can say, I didn't have a dad that taught me how to be a dad, great, but our Heavenly Father can teach you how to be a dad. He's the best dad in the whole world and he gave us a whole manual. For the first time in our life, we gotta read the instructions. Okay? Because why? He will tell us how to be a father. He will show us how to be a father, a loving father. But if we don't do that, and we're, we're still hanging on to that stuff, and say, well, I'm treating my wife because of the way my mom was treated by my dad. Get over it. Stop it. Let it go. What did they do in The Godfather when there was a problem? Bada bing, bada boom. All your enemies die in one day. That's where it happened. All of our memories can be dealt with through the cross. All of our past was dealt with through the cross. I've been preaching this for three years. Everything was dealt with here. All we have to do is let it go and let God kill it because he already did. Our sins, our old nature, everything was dealt with right here. Bada bing, bada boom to coin the phrase from the Godfather. Because why? We went to God the Father, said here it is, and he took care of it. And he did just what Don Corleone did. He killed it. May not be the greatest illustration, but it works. He killed it. He killed the enemy. It's all done. You with me? Y'all are real quiet. Normally you're not this quiet. It's good. Here we go. Let's continue on with this. Let me show you something. People carried false gods into the wilderness, meaning what? When they moved into the, into the wilderness from Egypt, believe it or not, the Israelites, just like us, took all their false gods with them. They carried them over. Because why? Moses told them to get rid of them. He said, you've got goat gods. You've got gods that Moses called demons. 
and they were still worshiping him at different times. They would go and they would do all their worship unto Jehovah, and then later on, sometime during the week, they were worshiping the other gods. Isn't that just like us? We come on Sunday and we go, oh man, we love you. We do all the stuff and it's great, it's wonderful. But during the week, who are we thinking about more? What are we thinking about more? What takes a greater place during the week? Whatever that is, it's a false God. It's something that you've placed above God himself. He said, get rid of them. Some men, get rid of this stuff. Let it go. False worship was a common practice and a standard for their fathers. Look in verse 2 of chapter 24. Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, From ancient times your fathers lived beyond the, the river, namely Terah, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and served other gods. He reminds them, if you read on, he's reminding them, you started out this way. Abraham and his people started out the way God called them out. And now the people still are getting ready. They carried over false gods into the new land and they were still serving them. And he's now at a point where he's calling them, who are you gonna serve? Why are you gonna do this? What are you gonna do? You're at a point of decision. It's the same thing, God bless Texas. It's the same thing in the Alamo. Travis drew a line. Now this is, this is hearsay. They don't know if he really did it, but, the, but history or tales say he did. He came to the point where it was all over. They had one choice to make. And he took his sword and he drew a line and he gave a wonderful speech. And then he said, I'm staying and fighting and I know I'm gonna die. If you will stay, want to stay with me, cross this line. If not, you can go with no shame. And everybody did. They drew the line. And there's a line drawn in the sand and God drew it. And he said, is it me or is it everything else? Go to the next one, my brother. A godly father is committed to the stand. What stand? Let me show you something. Look at verse 15. If it is disagreeable in your sight to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves today whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served, which were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. A godly father is committed to the stand. And actually, the one before that, he's committed to the course. 